Hello everyone. I am Dr. Ankit Mittal and I'll be taking your classes on topics of interest in the field of infectious diseases. So I've basically done my DM in infectious diseases from Ames New Delhi. In fact, I was the first student, first uh, resident to join the program in the six years batch in January 2016. About the course, obviously, as the name suggests, it deals with infections, all types. So it's bacterial, fungal, viral, parasitic, and not just infections or not just the management of infections. There's a huge role in diagnostics. So many a times there could be uh, difficult to diagnose cases where in an infectious diseases physicians consult might be useful. So apart from uh, dealing with infections, their diagnosis and management, uh, there's a larger role that an ID physician is supposed to play or uh, that uh, that comes under the scope of the practice of infectious diseases, that is antimicrobial stewardship programs. The other thing is to be part of hospital infection control committees. Now, hospital infection control is probably one of the most unemphasized. It has never been emphasized upon, uh, especially for uh, trainees who are working in government hospitals or right uh, where there is no concept of infection control. There is no, hardly there's any concept for uh, asepsis barring the operation theater. So, so if a central line has been put in the ward, probably all the steps for asepsis were not followed or uh, there's not no proper disposable or disposal of uh, biomedical waste, etc. And there's no good hand hygiene practices. Uh, there's no bundle care compliances. So all of this has direct impact on patient care. In fact, that I've mentioned about hand hygiene, I would just take one minute and emphasize upon the importance of hand hygiene for everybody who's listening to this, that you should practice hand hygiene wherever and whenever possible. WHO has given five moments of hand hygiene. You can either go for hand wash or hand rub. Trust me, this is the most effective means to prevent hospital acquired infections. You don't want your patient to have an hospital acquired infection. Nobody wants to have a hospital acquired infection because first of all, it is very difficult to treat. Second of all, uh, it would unnecessarily prolong the hospital stay by 10 to 14 days. It might have very poor outcomes and it will have a huge cost implications. So it is the responsibility of the doctors, the nursing staff, everybody who is taking care of the patient to maintain asepsis around him or her. right? So in addition to this, uh, there are two more things uh, that are currently in the underdeveloped stage right now. One is adult immunization and the other is travel medicine. So both of these things are going to be more and more relevant with time because more of our population is achieving the geriatric age group as well as we are going to have more and more immunosuppressed population as in when transplant etc are going to increase. So there are various vaccinations, important vaccinations that are indicated in these patients. Along with this, uh, the field of travel medicine is completely new and it has its own huge scope as a specialty. Uh, however, uh, as an infectious diseases person, you should be able to know uh, which countries are known for which diseases so that you can advise the traveler accordingly. So the question is, what is the need for an ID specialist? So the most important reason is that it is important to optimize care, right? So we are having more and more drug resistant organisms and antimicrobial resistance is increasing at a rapid rate. So this is just for comparison. So if you look at the world's leading causes of deaths, so uh, ischemic heart diseases are the most important one and they account for almost say 8.9 million deaths. However, uh, although respiratory or uh, diarrhea or other infectious etiology are important as a cause of death, uh, the thing is, if we move into the future, at the rate with which uh, antimicrobial resistance is increasing, we can expect 10 million deaths by 2050 with a huge economical uh, burden, right? And Asia is going to account for the highest number of deaths uh, out of these 10 million cases. So, like I'd mentioned, it is important that we 
optimize treatment for most of our patient we move away from empiricism and we move towards precision medicine and along with that uh, we have to uh, kind of make all the efforts to revert antimicrobial resistance because the pace at which resistance is increasing the evolution of drugs or pharmaceuticals is not going to happen more and chances are that once you come up with a drug resistance is going to develop to the new drug also in the next 2 to 4 years or even sooner right so the overall goal is to reduce antimicrobial resistance because it is going to have huge uh, implications in terms of the number of lives it takes as well as the cost burden so apart from the need to tackle the rising antimicrobial resistance there are other aspects to the practice of infectious diseases as well because we are seeing a rising number of atypical organisms as well as difficult to treat cases so mostly a standard consult for us would be uh, that the primary treating team has identified the organism has tried antibiotics as per the susceptibility profile and still there is no improvement so that is when the id physician primarily comes in the job is to supplement the management of a patient and also there is an increase in the atypical organisms so time and again we see outbreaks of burkholderia or stenotrophomonas in the icus and this is primarily due to better diagnostics as well as say things like malditoff being available which identifies even the unusual pathogens so one of one one aspect is this the other than that uh, there's an increase in the fungal as well as viral infections so this is primarily because of the uh, rising number of immunosuppressed patients where we see more and more fungal and viral infections so optimizing antivirals and antifungals which are far lesser in numbers as compared to antibiotics is sometimes more tricky where you need to have proper administration advices there need there's a need for therapeutic drug level monitoring so it might be a little tricky when we are dealing with antifungals and antivirals we have to look at multiple drug interactions etc and uh, that is important otherwise you may have the pathogen also you know which drug is going to work and still the drug doesn't work right apart from that obviously there is tuberculosis hiv where uh, the id physician comes in so it's a uh, it's a very wide variety branch of uh, say it's not a super specialization from medicine actually it's a sub specialty where we are focusing mainly on infections but infectious diseases cannot work in isolation so you need to have the knowledge of probably all systems in the body you need to work in close association with the specialists from other departments so as to understand your patient better so this i've already mentioned primarily we provide consultation services but obviously they can be your own same in patients whether you want it or not there can be specialty clinics stewardship program infection control education and research now once you are in an institution say for example if i talk about myself so i was fortunate to have trained in all india institute of medical sciences where education and research are perhaps as important as patient care so i was fortunate enough to be involved in the academic curriculum i have had more than 50 publications including uh, publications in njgm and lancet infectious diseases i've i've authored chapters it was all because of what the course or the field asks me to do right there was so much scope and opportunity to perform research and also engage in educational activity with respect to infectious diseases this is one person that probably every medical student knows about so this is dr house md and you'd be surprised to know that he has all the above qualifications so he's a nephrologist he's an infectious disease specialist and he also did his bsc in physics so uh, this is just to uh, highlight that how interesting the field of infectious diseases can be uh, because it deals with diagnosing and treating difficult cases in addition to a lot of other things that i just explained so with this i thank you and i welcome you to the series of lectures on topics of infectious diseases thank you